What's up, sixth grade students? I'm here to help you through the lab. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, homeroom's laughing at me. Okay, what's up, sixth grade students? Today, I'm gonna go over the labs that we did in class in case you're confused, finishing it at home. If you need any help, that's what this video is for. I'm recording live during 10th period. My homeroom is right over there, and there, and there, and there. Say hi, homeroom. Hi. All right, let's get started. All right, let's go ahead and start off with the triple beam balance lab. So you're, to do this lab, you're gonna wanna log in and read through the directions. Today in class, almost everyone I had to help was not reading the directions. They were asking me for clarification of things low on the page that they could have read at the top of the page to answer. So take a look at the screen. It starts off with vocabulary. It asks you a couple prior knowledge questions. These aren't really right or wrong. You're just supposed to show what you already do know, what you don't know. You're gonna kind of prove how good of a science teacher Mrs. Sewell was. All right, the real lab starts down here underneath this picture where it asks where the fulcrum is. This is one of the questions that a lot of kids ask me for help on. If you scroll back up to the top, the definition of fulcrum is right here and it explains what a fulcrum is. So you type your answer here. It says draw a circle, but I struggled to do that. I would write left, right, middle of the image. Put one of those answers there. Second question, how do you balance the object on the measurement tray? Well, it's quite simply just setting the object on the tray. After you answer those two questions, you come down to the lab itself. All right, question. How is a triple beam balance used to find mass? Number one, observe. The riders have masses of 10 grams, 100 grams, and one gram. Drag the 100 gram rider to 300. At this position, it balances a 300 gram mass. What happens at the pointer? All right, so let's go to the Gizmo website. Open up the triple beam balance. I'm going to launch that gizmo, and I'm going to do what it asks. I'm going to slide the hundreds all the way to 300. The question said, what happens at the pointer? And the pointer goes down. So I'm going to go back to my worksheet, and I'm going to type in, the pointer goes down. That's it. Number two, place each object on the measurement tray one at a time. Which objects has the has a mass greater than 300 grams. How do you know? Well, let's go back and take a look at the gizmo. I'm gonna set the paper clips on it. Nothing happened. I'm gonna set the light bulb on it. Nothing happened. I'm gonna set the cone on it. Whoa, it moved. It went up towards the top. Exciting, isn't it? I'm gonna put the cube on there. That moved to the top as well. That's my alarm. So, if the object causes the pointer to go up, then it must weigh more than 300 grams. Those are the answers I'm going to put into the document. All right, let's go back to the document. I'm not putting the answers there. You're not getting free answers for me. No, 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 no free answers for you. All right, number three, move the 100 gram rider back to zero, place the light bulb on the tray. Move the 100 gram rider to the right, one notch at a time until the pointer sinks. Now move the 100 gram rider back left one notch. Move the 10, point, 10 gram rider to the right one notch at a time until the pointer sinks below zero, and then move it back one notch to the left. Slowly move the one gram rider until the, po the pointer lines up with the zero mark. All right, so I'm gonna go to my gizmo, and I'm going to put the light bulb on the tray, like I said, and I'm gonna move the hundreds one at a time until it sinks. It sank at 300, so I'm gonna go back to 200. The next step said do the same thing with the tens, so here I go. It's getting close to zero, it's below zero, so I'm gonna go back to 40. Here we go with the ones, I'm gonna go to one, and the two, and the three, and the four. Almost there, and five. Ooh, almost there, and six, too much. All right, I'm gonna keep moving it till I can line it up very close, and it looks like it is at 5.6. Go back to the worksheet, and now ask me to write where the 100's at, where the 10's at, where the 1's at, and add them together here. So the 100 is at 200, the 10's are at 40, and the 1's are at 5.6. So on this worksheet, I would type in 200, 40, 5.6, add it together, and get 245.6 grams. The last question on this worksheet asks you to do the same thing, but for the paper clips, the cone, and the cube. 
All right, let's take a look at the other lab. Let's go ahead and look at the second assignment, the measuring volume. This is a longer assignment. I'm not gonna go through all of it. This video is already getting long enough, but I wanna go over a couple things. Just remember, like I said for the first worksheet, most questions that confuse you can be answered by reading the directions carefully. Even if you already read the directions, make sure you read them carefully and go back and reread them before giving up or just making up a random answer. All right, let's take a look at the worksheet. One of the first things that was messing everyone up was these prior knowledge questions right here, right beside this football and the volleyball. All right, so the question says that these two um, siblings, a brother and a sister, are arguing on whether a football or a volleyball takes up more space. So the question is, how would you measure and compare the sizes of these two um, sport balls? Well, this is how you would do it. There's no real right or wrong answer. So tell me, how would you figure out if a football or a volleyball is bigger? Whatever just came in your mind, type it in this box right here and write that down. If you're wrong, hopefully you'll learn the right answer by the end of this lab. If you're right by the end of the lab, you'll know you're right. So don't worry too much about it and just write down the answer that popped into your head. All right, under the gizmo warm up directly below that. It says when scientists talk about how big something is, they're really talking about volume or the amount of space it takes up. This, sorry, the measuring volume gizmo allows you to measure the volumes of liquids and solids using a variety of tools. So to begin, you need to remove the 50 milliliter graduated cylinder from the cabinet and place it below the faucet. To turn the faucet on, drag the slider next to the faucet up. Fill the cylinder about halfway as shown. All right, easy enough. So I'm gonna go to my gizmo and launch the volume gizmo. And I'm gonna take the 50 milliliter graduated cylinder out. Well, first I'm gonna go ahead and put these other ones away. To tell what size it is, if you look very carefully right here, it says 25 at the top, so that one is too small. This one right here says 100 at the top, that one's too big, so I'm going to put that one down there. All right, it says to fill it halfway, so I'm gonna turn on the water by moving the slider. I'm gonna wait till it gets to about halfway. It's a 50 milliliter graduated cylinder. 25 is about halfway, so that looks good. All right, back to the worksheet. Place the magnifier over the water line. Click the box, this box right here. Click edit to draw a sketch of what you see. Label the large tick marks on your sketch. All right, so let's go back here and use the magnifying glass. All right, I see it. Ooh, that's pretty close. It's just below this big tick mark right here. So if this is 20, that's 30. This one must be half. So 20.5, because there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So there's 10 marks between 20 and 30. So this would be 20.5. All right, so going back here, it says click the box, click edit, and draw what I see. All right, so here's the box. I'm gonna draw different shapes, and I'm going to draw what I saw inside of that. So there's my graduated cylinder. I'm gonna draw some lines for tick marks. I'm not gonna take too long. So here is a tick mark for that one. I'll do another one. Let's do another one down here. All right, so I got some lines here. There we go, and I'm gonna do the one in the middle. The one in the middle was a little shorter. That's where my curve was. All right, so I got my three lines there. I don't want that there. And now we need to draw where the water's at. I'm gonna try doing a curve, and I'm gonna draw the water line. And the water line was curved right below that line. All right, I don't know if I like that curve. I don't like that curve. So I'm gonna delete that one and try again. All right, I want the curve to go right. Oh, there we go. Not the best drawing, but it kind of shows what I did. I'm gonna use the arrow and move that up a little bit. All right, I am not asking you guys to be perfect artists, but I'm gonna save and close that. And now my little drawing showed up on the paper. What volume is repre represented by each small tick mark. So I'm gonna go back here, and we already decided that if this is 20 and this is 30, all of the ones in between are <clears throat> decimals. So it's 
represented by point one or point one zero. More about that later. What shape, what is the shape of the water line? Well, it's a curve. That's what I type here. Then it tells me what this curve shape is called and asks me what the volume of the water in the graduated cylinder is. Your answer and my answer are going to be different because if you look here, this is where my line is. Your line might be higher or lower or in a different spot. So that's the first page. On the second page, it now says, goal, fill a graduated cylinder with a given amount of water. Now notice I just skipped all of this stuff. I move straight to here. This is what I mentioned earlier that I don't want you to do. I don't want you to make that mistake. So read this. Activity A, get the gizmo ready. We're going to drag all objects to the cabinet, move the 25 milliliter graduated cylinder, the 250 milliliter beaker, and the two milliliter pipette to the counter. That's important. If I wouldn't have done that, if I didn't read that, I wouldn't be able to do the next lap. So I'm going to put this away. I'm going to dump this out and there's something satisfying about pouring this out. Watch. And I'm going to get out what it said. And I forget, I want the 25 milliliter graduated cylinder. All right, 25 on the counter, just like it said. I want the 250 milliliter beaker right here on the counter, 250. I want the two milliliter pipette. A pipette is the scientific name for what a lot of people call eyedroppers. It's not letting me click it. And I'm putting it on the counter. Having those three items out right now makes life and this lab a lot easier. All right, back. Introduction, graduated cylinders are precise tools for measuring volume. You can read the rest yourself. Goal, fill a graduated cylinder with a given amount of water. Prepare. Number one, place the 250 milliliter beaker below the faucet and fill it with water. How much? It said fill. Afterwards, it says you use this beaker as a source of water. So fill it up to where you think is full. Some people will fill it to the very tip top to the brim, kind of like my Charlie the Duck story. Some people will just fill it to 250. I'm going to fill it right there to some random spot there. It doesn't matter. This is the source of our water. All right. Next, it says... Measure, to pour water from the beaker to the graduated cylinder, move the beaker over the graduated, graduated cylinder. Add about 15 milliliters of water to the graduated cylinder. It does not have to be exact. All right, so I'm gonna grab this, I'm gonna move it over top of it, and I'm gonna pour it in until I get to the right number. I already forgot what the number was. I'm gonna go back and check. It says fill it to 15 milliliters. All right, 15 milliliters, here we go. Well, let me figure out where 15 is. 5, 10, 15, all right, so I wanna stop right around there. All right, ooh, I'm pouring it in. Go back and see what's next. Place the magnifier over the water line, click the box, edit and sketch what you see. Label the large tick marks on your sketch. All right, so I'm gonna take the magnifying glass, I'm going to put it here and this is what I see. Notice this time the curve is closer to the line. I did a better job. I'm gonna draw this just like I did the other one, but last time and this time, I need to make sure I label my numbers. I didn't do it on the one earlier. So technically I didn't follow the directions and I would lost the point, but I notice it now. So I'm gonna go back and add my numbers here. I'm gonna add my numbers so I don't lose my points. I'm gonna go ahead and put right here. I'm gonna put 20 milliliter. I'm gonna move the box. There's nothing wrong if you mess up going back and fixing your mistake. I'm gonna add another box. These don't have to be perfect. And it's 30 milliliters. I'm going to drag it over there so it's by the other line, right about there. Really ugly drawing, but it's a drawing. So I'm going to draw here now based off of this. I'm not really going to draw. We're going to move on. All right. So now it asks a bunch of questions about this picture right here. It asks how many medium tick marks lie between the labeled ones. The medium ones are these bigger ones. So here's 15, here's 20. There's one, two, three, four. That's all I have to write down is four. I'm not gonna give you all the answers, but go through there, count and answer the questions. If you're wrong, you're wrong. We'll go over the right answers. You'll learn what the right answer is afterwards, but I think if you try, you're gonna be just fine. All right, let's see what step three is. Scientists use pipettes, also known as eyedroppers, to add and remove small amounts of water to fill the pipette. Place its tip in the beaker and click the black bulb. To release a small amount of water, place the pipette above the graduated cylinder and click the bulb. Do this until the graduated cylinder contains exactly 17.5 milliliters of water. 
So I'm going to put the magnifying glass away, grab the pipette, and I'm going to click this to fill it up. And I need to get to 17.5. I wonder if I can use the magnifying glass with it. See, I don't know. Let's see if I can do this. Oh, I can. Wait, I need to know what these lines are to know when to stop. Man, see, I didn't do the questions above. I don't know where to stop because I didn't write down what the tick marks are. All right, I think you have an idea what you're supposed to do. If you work your way from the top to the bottom and you do everything and you follow directions, it will all line up and make sense. I would know exactly where 17 and a half is if I knew what all these lines represented. So after you do this one, you're gonna do some more. You're gonna take some screenshots, take a screenshot. It says in number five that you use this menu down here, the tool menu, and you can take a screenshot. When you take a screenshot, you can save it. If you're on a Chromebook, do a two spaced click to save it. If you're on a uh, computer, you do a right click and you save as. So you're gonna post the screenshots here. When you get to the next page, you're doing math in a different way. You're finding volume of cubic objects. You're basically going to follow the directions, count, multiply, and label. All right, I hope this helps. If you get stuck, this video should help you through it. But remember, the number one rule, what you really need to make sure you do is go back and read the directions carefully. You can leave me a message on Google Classroom, send me an email, or see me first thing in the morning if you need extra time or clarification. I really hope this helped. Thanks to my home room during study hall. All you guys, nice job, everybody. Thumbs up. They were quiet, allowing me to do this to help everybody. All right, we'll see everybody in class later. Bye. What's up, sixth grade students? Yeah, I don't know what to say. Let's try that again.